you're great. Okay. Um, very nice to see you all. It's uh, yeah, it's on the yeah, it's on the nose, isn't it? So it's fine. Um, okay, so we're going to talk about marketing yourself on a, a very in a very economical way. I think that's the best way of um, summing it up. Um, I brought a chap with me today um, called Nick Chubb, who uh, is a very talented industrial product designer. You name it. Um, I came across Nick four years ago here at the show, and. Um, I think the best way of describing it, he, he was destined for greatness. Uh, the reason being, uh, he was a very entertaining chap and a very talented man. And I, I thought it made sense to invite somebody who uh, is, is more in line with you. Because I'm, my background's textiles. Cheers, Alex. Yeah, so I'm just going to follow on from that with basically going into a bit more depth around the portfolio itself uh, and things that you can do just to increase your chances. Um, so I'll just go through. Just to give you a bit of a background uh, to me and what I do, uh, I first started, I went to, started university in 2008. I went to Sheffield Hallam, studied product design. Um, just that. So uh, yeah, I, I'd always done sort of uh, graphic design and branding and worked with a company doing that side of things. My first product job I'd it was an, uh, an internship doing cookware and homeware stuff and did a bit of furniture. I then went into the nursery industry um, and then outdoor and adventure products and also did structural packaging and then now doing consumer electronics, consumer products and also medical and healthcare projects. So I've seen quite a you know, broad uh, amount of projects within the industry. These are some of the brands uh, that I've been lucky enough to work with. Um, and so the first one, yeah, Mamas and Papas. All sorts of like high chairs and toys, accessories and that kind of thing. Um, spent every day for a year designing this thing, which is the Armadillo Flip. Um, and then the next job, yeah, was Life Venture. So there's two other brands as well, Little Life and Live Systems. And this was the sort of outdoor and adventure products. So I was doing uh, sort of like water filtration systems. There was some soft goods as well. So backpacks, uh, thermal mugs, baby carriers, all that kind of thing. And what was good about working in-house is that you get to go to these trade shows. Um, so this is Friedrich Schaffen in Germany, so it's the largest outdoor trade show in the world. Um, it's quite enjoyable. And so now I work with IDC, Industrial Design Consultancy uh, near Windsor. So these are some of the, I can't show you anything that I've worked on there so far, uh, but this was a coffee machine for Mars. Um, this is what we worked with, uh, British Cycling, did some uh, helmets with British Cycling. But then you've got, so this was a user interface for a company called Vistian, so that went into a smart car. Um, the actual head designer at Red Bull was asked if you didn't have to meet all the rules and regulations of Formula One, what would the car look like? So he designed it, and IDC models uh, were assigned to build a full-scale prototype of that. Um, and, and this is a laryngoscope, so it's uh, what surgeons use to put down your throat and open up your larynx. So, and then these are orthopedic instruments. So working for a consultancy, you get to experience a whole variety of different projects. Um, that's the main thing I love about it. So like, I'm not a design director. Um, I've never been a design manager. But I've been through a bit of a unique experience in the way that I've had a shed load of interviews at a lot of businesses uh, in the UK. And in doing that, just through networking over the last sort of eight years, I've introduced myself to a lot of people. And when Alex is saying that and networking, you've got to get yourself out there. Part of doing that is I've had feedback directly on my portfolio from some, some pretty big hitters. Um, and this one here, Amina Horozic, I'll just let you know this, if any of you are in product design, she wrote a book called Breaking In where she interviewed 100 of the top design directors in the world, asking them all the same questions of what do you look for in a design portfolio, what do you look for in a new designer. Um, so if you're in product design, I'd really recommend getting that book. Um, and there's also another author did another one about advertising. So if any of you are in the more marketing and graphic side. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to go through some of the stuff that, yeah, that, I've, that I've been taught. So Alex touched on this as well. So process is just absolutely um, key to your portfolio. I see doing the portfolio reviews here for the last five years, 
I see so many portfolios where it's just render after render after render and just images of the final product. And in reality, what they really want to see is not just your products, but seeing you and the process. Uh, and it's, this isn't just some wishy-washy bullshit showing out you, you're working out. You know, showing your process and the journey you've gone through is what you've had to do in your course to get the grade you have. It's what you're going to have to do now to get yourselves a job. But it's also what consultancies and real businesses have to do to win business and win contracts and win jobs. So this isn't something that's going to go away. This showing your process and the journey and your thinking is something you're going to have to do all through your career uh, and doing it visually as well. So as I said, it's not about your products. You know, you've got to sell you, not your products. And this is the sort of bang average render that I'm talking about. And in reality, rendering, especially in product design, you know, it's about 2% of my time. Everything else, it's real design development, testing, sketching, all that process stuff. And you won't spend that much time rendering. So in your portfolio, it's, it's not really a... Although you need to show you can do it, it's not a, a key, key skill, um, especially compared to sketching and development. So I, I had an interview once in Manchester with a company called 257. And it was really frustrating. I hadn't been out of university long. I hadn't spent much time on my portfolio. And... It was really frustrating because he was asking to see things that I could do. I had the skills, but I, just, I didn't have any evidence of it in my portfolio. So it's this idea that, you know, if I can't see it, you can't do it. And the reader can only assume that if they can't see evidence of something, how else are they meant to know that you're capable of it? So instead of seeing your portfolio as, here's this product and tell them all about this product, and here's this product to tell them all about this product, how about thinking about what skills you have listing all those and make sure that those skills are in your portfolio so make it more about you and not the products Alex touched on this as well but you know there's no points for quantity if you show something amazing and something great you come out great if you show something amazing something great something pretty shit and something good you come out actually not that good you know so this idea that you're only really trying to create enough intrigue to bring you in for interview. You don't have to tell the full story in that first portfolio. Um, I've got another side to come on to that later, but this is another thing I hear doing these portfolio reviews. Um, I'll see some projects and to get a bit sheepish and it's sort of like, yeah, um, yeah, that one. Yeah, you can just, like making excuses for themselves, sort of like, yeah, you can flick past that one. Um, that, yeah, yeah, that was first year. And, you know, get it out then. If, if that's how you're looking at it, how are they going to look at it? So just get it out. But if it was a nice idea and the execution wasn't great, then go back, redo it. You don't have to show, you know, this is what I did in first year, this is what I did in second year. Nobody cares when you did it. They just want to see some awesome design work. So, you know, go through your portfolio. If something had been improved, go back and retrospectively do stuff for it. This is another question I get, especially with product design students. They'll say, should I include graphic design in my portfolio? And the answer is no, because your product design portfolio should be a shining example of how great you are at graphic design and graphic layouts. You shouldn't need to be showing graphic design stuff as well as that. It, it, you know, it should be awesome. And whether you're in fashion or you know, textiles, the portfolio should look absolutely awesome and you shouldn't need to show you know, little... I don't know whether you did a menu for some pub down the road or something like that, which happens a lot. So, yeah, this is what I was saying earlier. So the goal of your portfolio isn't to get you a job. The goal of your portfolio is to get you an interview. And when you take that mindset, all of a sudden your portfolio becomes a lot more concise. You just strip out all the crap. Everything's visual. It's really impactful. And the speed at which someone's going to look through your portfolio... Um, you know, it's sort of click, 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 yeah, that's good, click, nice, uh, click, close, delete, next person. It's that brutal, that's how fast it is. So, no one is going to read a paragraph of text, absolutely no one. The portfolios I was reviewing here, I was spending more time on those than a design director would looking at portfolios, and I wasn't reading anything. It's purely, you're looking at visual, and then if it's awesome, 
in the visual, you might read a few bits of text, but certainly not, you know, blocks of huge bodies of, of words. Um, but to get around that, you really need to be thinking about how you can craft some really nice messages for, you, for your products and your projects. So how can you give like so just a really punchy question or a statement that sums up and captures the essence of the whole project without some massive story about it that's just enough so that when they look at the rest of the work, they, do, they just get it, they understand it. And that serves you a massive favour because when they're looking at the rest of the work for that project, they understand what it's about and they can see more of that decision making and, and the thought process that's gone into it. So yeah, less adjectives and less bullshit. We were looking for an intern this year um, and even taking on you know, recent graduates. This is no word of a lie. The guy's written, I know creativity like I know the flavour of my favourite ice cream. And there's, it's surprising how many sort of ridiculously cheesy lines that you hear. You know, it's, just, it's not cool. Right, just stick to the facts and... Um, yeah, just, just tell it how it is. Uh, if you, you need to be creating your portfolio in InDesign, the, what you get in terms of the file reduction capabilities and everything like that, you just, and layout, that's what you need to be using. So if you're not well versed in InDesign, when you're crafting this portfolio, I would see right now as, take this as your, when you're going to learn to master InDesign. And I'd aim, Around five meg, don't go over ten. Um, and also, you know, if you're applying for a job, why would you send, here's a PDF of a cover letter, here's a PDF of my CV, and here's a PDF of my portfolio. Just get everything into one PDF, and now ev that person's just got one file that they need, that they can look at, or forward on to someone else, and it's just, yeah, let's bring him in for interview. Um, this, yeah, I see a lot of people who would just send in loads of different files, just get it all into one. And this is a really big point. So it's a global stage now. We've got people working at IDC from Portugal, Poland, Spain, Mongolia, China, Hong Kong. Um, so you're not, if you're the best in your year at your university on your course right now, it doesn't mean shit, you know, that is a pretty small pond and it's a global stage so when businesses are looking to hire people it, you know, it's massive, you're not just even competing against people in your uni you're competing against other people in other unis but also you're not just competing against these unis in the UK, it's worldwide but also it's not just people from this year, how many people do you know who might have taken who graduated last year, who were really good designers and decided to take a gap year or go travelling and now they're looking for jobs now and that's who you're competing with. You might have people who, you really got to look at it as, if I own a design consultancy and I've got to hire someone, you know, I'm weighing up whether I should hire someone with five years experience for salary X or hire, you know, one of you guys for salary Y and they've got to make that decision. So you're not just competing with people, you know, roughly the same age as you, you're competing with everyone. And you've got to understand that, which means your portfolio is just, it's got to scream quality, really got to stand out. Um, and Art said, I mean, it's a massive, massive opportunity, this. I can't stress this enough. The competitions they've got on, on going on that Alex is setting up, it's unreal. So the competitions with Nike, Levi's, there's one currently with Eastpac, uh, Urban Outfitters, BBC Worldwide. It's insane. And there's like cash prizes. People have earned internships at Nike, Global HQ. You know, people are in the second year. They're going into third year having two months at Nike. You know, um, so the great thing is for you guys, you can still enter these competitions two years after graduating. Um, to get on there, man. You might win yourself 1,500 quid or something. Um, so this is, uh, this is what Jay-Z said. He said, I'm not a businessman. I'm a business man. And you've got to have that. You know, it's a real sort of creating a brand for yourself. Why am I going to meet you and tell somebody else about you? 
why am I going to pick up your business card or your portfolio or meet you and then go and tell my managing director that we've got to bring you in for an interview? You've got to get yourself an arts thread, Behance, Coraflot, you've got to get yourself a website, you've got to get on LinkedIn. It, it's, you know, it's massive, massive amounts of effort. Uh, and don't estimate, uh, underestimate that amount of effort either. So, does anyone know who this guy is? Does anyone know? Have a shout out if you can. It is Walt Disney. Uh, so, there's a story of Walt Disney. He um, he had an idea for his business, which was Disneyland, and he went to the bank. Um, you know, and he told the bank manager about his idea for his business, and he got rejected. Then he went to another bank and got rejected, went to another bank and got rejected. How many people here, if you went to three banks with an idea and got rejected, would you then just sort of think, yeah, better leave it, yeah. Pro pro probably not that good, is it? Um, you know, he went to 302 banks personally before he got the money to invest in Disneyland. And the message there is, you know, don't, if you're getting interviews you've got nothing to worry about if you get in interviews. There's so many reasons why you might not be hired. You've just got to keep going and, and smash through that wall. Um, if you're not getting interviews, there's something wrong with your portfolio. But my message is you've got to be thick-skinned. As a designer anyway, in, in a job, you're constantly putting things out there to people who are going to criticise it. So you've got to be thick-skinned for the job, but in order to get the job, you've got to be massively thick-skinned. Um, and just be just be ready for that. In terms of being resourceful, um, some of the the guys that I showed uh, up at the start, those the six faces. Um, I remember there's a guy called Russell Beard. He owns a design consultancy in in uh, Cheltenham, and I'd met him. And this guy, he knows a lot of people. I remember just saying to him, "Look, you know, on LinkedIn, it, it tells you." if someone's looked at your profile. I remember ringing him up and said, look, Russ, I'm going to be looking at your profile every day if that's all right, so don't think I'm a stalker or anything. Just went through pretty much every name and anyone decent that I liked, wrote the contact details down, wrote Russell back and said, look, any chance you can introduce me to this person? You've got to be resourceful and networking and being, being crafty and meeting the right people and going to the right events and just having a pint with someone is going to beat a cover letter every single time. Um, and so if you can be resourceful and, and just think, how can I meet that person? How can I grab a cup of coffee with that person? Design manager at Joseph Joseph, how can I grab a cup of coffee with that person? And when, if, if you get that right, all of a sudden you sort of, the font on your CV and cover letter is just minuscule, you know, it just... Who cares, All right? Yeah, sound, let's bring him in, you know. Create that connection and be resourceful in how you can create that connection. I've, like Alex said, I've got a blog, so I'm going to write down so a lot of the things and books and resources and websites that I use that I, um, that I found some of the jobs and made connections, but especially some books and links and stuff like that. I'm going to write some notes on my own blog after this. So we don't say thank you where I'm from, we say tar very much. So tar very much, thank you, good luck. And um, yeah, I think we'll have a few questions. But I think, yeah, my blog, if you go on it, the subscribe, this, uh, I'll write some notes. So I think your two actions are do that, get on Artsed, enter some competitions and smash your portfolio. Cheers.